All right, well, good morning, everyone. We'll get started, if that's okay with all of you. Um, thank you so much for being here this morning. I'd like to acknowledge and welcome uh, La Mesa City Council Member Colin Parent, uh, Diane Takaborian, Executive Director of the Environmental Health Coalition, Nicole Kapritz, Executive Director of the Climate Action Campaign, uh, David Garcias from SEIU Local 221, uh, and Sandy Naranjo, a resident of National City all of whom you'll hear from in just a moment. Uh, as many of you know, we as San Diegans enjoy uh, arguably one of the best climates uh, in the world. Uh, however, as we've seen here at home and around the world, our climate is rapidly changing, and we know that air pollution is a significant contributor to climate change. This science fact demands urgent action at all levels of government. And if we're gonna stop climate change, we must create safe and clean futures for our children and our grandchildren. We must act now, and we must go beyond business as usual. That is why today I'm announcing the introduction of Assembly Bill 423, legislation that I've authored to reform the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District, and more specifically, its governing board. The Air Pollution Control District is an agency within the County of San Diego charged with controlling toxic emissions, ensuring pollution sources are compliant with government regulations, permitting facilities, and researching new technologies that will bring our region closer to attaining federal, state, and local air quality goals. To date, the board has been governed solely by the County Board of Supervisors, but it's clear that this district can and should do more to clean up the air and protect public health in every community and every part of our region. Last year, the American Lung Association rated San Diego County as the sixth in the nation for high-level ozone, the main ingredient in smog. In addition, we know that cities and communities are high, uh, in highly industrialized areas. Places like National City, Barrio Logan, Logan Heights, and Sherman Heights are at risk of high levels of toxic pollution, yet not enough has been done to monitor or to mitigate toxic air contaminants in these communities. Not only is this current structure antiquated and unfair, it denies cities a voice and gives the county indirect land use authority, but it does not reflect the diversity of our county's residents. Under my bill, AB 423, the board of the San Diego County, County so easier said than. <laughs> the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District, yeah, I do need to get used to this. There's gonna be a lot of hearings on this. Under my bill, AB 423, the board of the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District will no longer solely be governed by the County Board of Supervisors. AB 423 instead increases the board's membership to 11 individuals comprised of representatives from the other 18 cities in the county, as well as subject matter experts and members of the public. The County Board of Supervisors will continue to have two seats uh, and our region's 18 cities in, uh, will be grouped together based on population and appropriated seats accordingly. This new board will create uh, three new public member seats, one for a public health professional, one for an air pollution specialist, and one for an environmental justice community member. This change puts more voices at the table and mirrors the board's composition for other major metropolitan areas in the state. It is important to note that while the San Diego is one of the top five air districts in terms of population and pollution, it is the only air board in the state We have a large metropolitan area governed solely by the County Board of Supervisors. I'll repeat that again because that's a key distinction. It is important to note that San Diego is one of the top five air districts in terms of population and pollution, but it is the only district of a large metropolitan area governed solely by the County Board of Supervisors. Now, I do wanna be very clear. This change in AB 423 is not intended to affect any of the staffing at the San Diego County Air Pollution Control District. In fact, I'm confident that the district is well served by the dedicated and talented civil service employees who are there. This is about the governance. What AB 423 is more about is representation and encouraging a real regional action when it comes to climate change. And I'll let others talk about that in more, spe uh, in more specifics. So all San Diegans, regardless of their zip code, deserve an air pollution control district board that will act, that will adopt strict rules to reduce harmful emissions, improve public health and the environment, and most importantly, ensure that we all have the opportunity to breathe clean air. By transforming San Diego's air pollution control district into a more diverse and representative body, I firmly believe that we have real potential to get the county to take aggressive action on climate change and ensure that whatever strategies are implemented, that they are done so equitably throughout our entire region. And with those opening comments, it's my pleasure to turn over the podium to La Mesa City Council member, my friend, Colin Parent. Colin?
Thank you very much, uh, Assemblymember Gloria. My name is Colin Parent. I'm the Vice Mayor of the City of La Mesa. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here uh, today to support AB 423 uh, by Assemblymember Gloria. Uh, I think this proposal puts San Diego in line with other large uh, air districts throughout the state, uh, as we just heard. And uh, it makes air quality control district more representative of our region uh, uh, by including cities like La Mesa in the discussions and decisions about air quality. Air pollution is connected to climate change. The same tailpipes that are emitting pollution that damage the lungs of low-income children are also producing greenhouse gas emissions that affect our climate. AB 423 has the potential to make a significant difference on climate action regionally. Cities like La Mesa have adopted enforceable climate plans. Uh, they're not being sued for noncompliance. Uh, we need all of the resources in the region to be brought to bear to address air pollution and our climate goals. Nobody should be sitting on the sidelines. Under AB 423, cities like La Mesa will have a seat at the table and an equal voice. Together, we can ensure that our region is acting to keep our air clean and using our resources to combat climate change. I also want to thank Assemblymember Gloria for leading on this bill. And I also want to thank the advocacy organizations like the Environmental Health Coalition and Climate Action Campaign for continuing the fight for climate and environmental justice. And also want to thank the SEIU for being here and supporting as well. Thank you so much. Big. Yeah, give it up. We're used to having rallies, right? So I know we're indoors, but you still can applaud. It's totally fine. And forgive me, <laughs> Vice Mayor Parent, uh, that's that's fantastic. And I, for those of you that are not following, you need to look at what La Mesa is doing under Collins' leadership. It's really refreshing to see more corners of our county working together to work on climate. Someone who's been at the climate table for a very long time uh, is my friend Diane Takvoyan, as I mentioned before, the, the leader of the Environmental Health Coalition. Diane, a few words, please. Thank you. So good morning, and uh, thank you. Uh, San Diego has a serious air pollution problem. We need new leadership. We need a proactive air pollution board whose goal is to improve public health and ensure that everyone can breathe clean air. We need a board that will adopt new rules to reduce emissions throughout our region. EHC is proud to sponsor AB 423, I need to get it right, uh, with Assemblymember uh, Todd Gloria to reform San Diego Air Pollution Control Board and bring our region into the modern times. Assemblymember Gloria is rectifying a 25-year-old exemption that allowed San Diego to languish behind the other large regions in the state. AB, um, through two, <laughs> AB 423, sorry, ensures that San Diego will have a broad, uh, a board that's broad and diverse representation from every city to address the most urgent air pollution needs. And we have a lot of work to do. Air pollution monitors in Chula Vista and El Cajon both indicate that human cancer risks of over 300 per million people, which is unaccept unacceptably high. These risk estimates are in fact quite conservative because they don't even include diesel particulate pollution, the number one cancer-causing pollutant in outdoor air. Improving public health, especially children's health, should be the goal. Asthma should not be the new normal. Children in low-income communities of color like Barrio Logan and um, National City suffer from up to three times the rate of asthma ER visits of other areas in the county. We know about these risks. And we know about the realities, but the San Diego Air Pollution Control District does not require polluters to reduce their toxic emissions until the risk level reaches 100 cancers per million, which is extraordinarily high. Some health risk assessments from these facilities are 10 to 20 years old, so we really don't even know what hazards they pose. The San Diego Air Pollution Control District needs to come into the light and become transparent. There is an astonishing lack of information available to the public. Every resident should be able to know about every facility that has an air pollution permit. They should know what pollution is emitted into their neighborhood and what the health risks are. We need a massive shift in the way that we fight air pollution in San Diego. We can do so much more and we believe that reforming the Air Pollution Control Board will provide the vision and the resources to the hardworking staff that make, to make that shift. As a member of the California Air Resources Board, I have seen progress other districts are making uh, to promote zero emission vehicles from cars to heavy duty trucks, and I have seen their aggressive and ambitious programs to reduce cumulative pollution from ports and industrial centers. San Diego can rise to the challenge. AB 423 is the first step. Thank you. 
Thank you, Diane. And I very much appreciate the Environmental Health Coalition sponsorship of this legislation. Uh, it's critical to actually its uh, ultimate success. So thank you for that. And thank you to the members of EHC who are here uh, in support. They are our climate warriors, and I appreciate you guys being involved. Another climate warrior and someone I know everything, I look, taught me everything I know about climate change uh, is my friend Nicole Capritz here on behalf of the Climate Action Campaign. Nicole? Good morning, my name is Nicole Capritz with the Climate Action Campaign, and we are also here happy to co-sponsor this bill with Assemblymember Gloria. Uh, Councilmember Gloria and I have a long history of working together on this issue, and I'm pleased to see his relentless commitment to continuing to fight one of the greatest threats in human history, the climate crisis. The way I see it, we kind of have three crises at play here. Number one, we have a public health crisis. Smog is a severe air pollutant and a deadly one. It is absolutely unacceptable that for years, San Diego County has had an F from the American Lung Association in smog, and they have neglected to do anything about it. It's not like they didn't know that there was a problem. It's not like they didn't know what to do. They just refused to do it. And as you heard previously from Environmental Health Coalition, there are tremendous air quality impacts in our most vulnerable communities that are absolutely unacceptable. The second crisis we see is that there's a climate crisis. You cannot turn on the news today without hearing grim news about what is happening, happening in our world and the escalating threat that climate change poses to our future and especially poses to our quality of life and obviously uh, affects our ability to have a clean and healthy environment. The third crisis that we see is a leadership crisis. The County of San Diego, unfortunately, has neglected its duty, has not done their job. They have had ample opportunity to step up to the plate on climate change, and yet the environmental community has had to sue the County of San Diego twice because they refused to adopt a climate plan that was uh, compliant with state law. They refused to adopt a, cl a climate plan that protected public health. That is unacceptable. So the way we see it, this is an, an incredible opportunity to turn the tide. It's an incredible opportunity to finally show leadership in all three areas. And so that is exactly why we're here today. The other thing I wanna mention what we see as a huge problem is that while the county not only has neglected to adopt a climate action plan that protects public health and our future, they continue to vote yes on sprawl projects. So what do these sprawl projects do? They continue to exacerbate the air pollution crisis and the climate crisis. So it's just another example of failed leadership. And so again, we're super pleased to be here with everybody here today and to partner and to ensure that we help the county <laughs> turn around. Because as I know Assemblymember Gloria agrees, we cannot solve this climate crisis in a vacuum. We have to act regionally. The city of San Diego and many other cities, including La Mesa, have adopted ambitious, compliant climate action plans. But undermining every single one of those efforts is the failed leadership of the county. So again, we're happy to be here today. We need to get everybody together. Our fates are tied together. And thank you, council member, uh, council member. Just Used to time. be, taught mayor, time. council member, <laughs> something, I can't keep track. Uh, we're uh, proud to be here today. Thank you for everything thank you. you do. Thank you, Nicole. I always say, just call me Todd. The, the, the titles may change, but the work remains the same. And of course, climate is on the top of the agenda, regardless of the jobs that we're doing, because it is an existential, existential crisis. And thank you for tying this together. I think many of the reporters in this room have uh, reported extensively on the city's climate action plan, the landmark nature, the historic nature of that document, of that plan. Uh, this bill very much is going to help uh, the actual implementation of that important document so, and that important plan. And it ain't just the city any longer. It's La Mesa, it's Solana Beach, it's Del Mar, it's all these other communities that have bought into this vision. We need regional action. AB 423 is about that. Uh, next up is uh, our SCIU 221, uh, David Garcias. David, will you come up and say a few words? Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, thank you. My name is David Garcias. I'm the president of SCIU Local 221, and I'm very proud to represent uh, over 10,000 county workers, which includes the hardworking, uh, the hardworking uh, representatives that work in the Air Pollution Control District, and they take their job very seriously. You know, our members are on the front lines every day, and they monitor the, the air pollution levels and ensure compliance so that we keep our communities and our neighborhoods 
clean. No one knows it better than our members the importance of work, and we are crystal clear that the board would benefit from the added environmental uh, advocates standing together, which includes the perspective from cities and uh, subject matter experts. I'm also proud that uh, labor and environmental advocates are standing together today. All of us breathe the same air, and all of us want an economy that invests in quality jobs and keeps our community healthy and active. The days of being divided by false choices of jobs versus environments are over in California. And in Washington, I want to thank Assemblymember uh, Todd Gloria for your leadership and letting us know that uh, we will stand, let you know that we will stand uh, with you to get this bill passed. Thank you very much. Very powerful words. That's exactly right. It is not a choice between jobs and the environment. It is really both. And I think California is proving again and again with our robust economy, with some of our most aggressive climate and environmental laws, uh, that that is exactly right. So thank you, David, for being here. And definitely take to your members, uh, understand that this bill is about empowering them to do more work. We have confidence in the public servants that are at the Air Pollution Control District. We want to take their talents and use them to the fullest extent to make sure San Diego is on the cutting edge when it comes to climate change. We think that this bill will help them do their jobs even better. So thank you for being here. Last but certainly not least um, is a resident of a community that is impacted disproportionately uh, by some of the climate uh, pollutants uh, that we're dealing with. I appreciate Sandy Naranjo being here to give a voice to her community of National City. Sandy, a few words. Good morning. My name is Sandy Naranjo and I'm a resident of National City where I also work as a policy advocate for the Environmental Health Coalition. When I was three years old, I became very sick. One day my family rushed me to the hospital because I had difficulty breathing. At the hospital, I cried out for my mother with what little breath I had left. Before I could find her face in a crowd of doctors, I lost consciousness. When I woke up, the doctor informed us that I had suffered my first asthma attack. I still suffer from asthma. Over the years, I learned more about the causes of my illness. Growing up, air pollution from the freeway practically in my backyard had permanently damaged my lungs and caused my severe asthma. In National City, where I now work and live with my family, raising my two children ages of three and one years old, the Calavirus screen has ranked it in the top 12% of the most polluted uh, areas in California. So more and more of our children in our neighborhoods are being diagnosed with asthma much more than other San Diego communities. Three decades after being rushed to the ER and being diagnosed with asthma, children are still being rushed to the ER because they cannot breathe. Our communities have had enough. They have a right to know how pollution is affecting them. Regular notifications of health risk should be sent to residents. Elected officials need to involve us, not just polluters, in the process of making rules and standards that have serious impacts on our health and well-being. Thank you, and thank you, Assembly Member Todd Gloria, for making this happen. I don't know that I could say any better than that, Sandy. Thank you so much. And I, I guess I would just would wrap up trying to link that up. I recognize uh, and totally understand if most of the people in this room have never heard of the Air Pollution Control District for San Diego. <laughs> But what you heard Sandy just talk about is how very much linked the lived experiences of many in our community are impacted by this agency that many of you have never heard about. And we think that by passing AB 423, expanding the decision makers that are part of this process and making sure that voices like Sandy and her neighbors are heard as decisions are made about what grants to pursue at the state and federal level, about what priorities and interventions we want to do. Are we going to do more lawn mowers or are we going to do more zero emission vehicles? There, these are the kinds of questions that we can have uh, uh, probably a different outcome on, and ultimately the outcome that we want to have is a community that leads on climate, 
one that doesn't have one of the worst air uh, quality ratings uh, in the community, in the state, and one that where children have a better out a health care outcome uh, going forward. So this is going to be big legislation. Uh, I appreciate you being here to let us uh, exp uh, explain it to you. Uh, the bill was introduced yesterday in Sacramento, and so you all are the first to hear about it. Uh, and we look forward to spending the rest of the year convincing the, my colleagues in the legislature and the governor to sign this into law to end this loophole that has allowed San Diego to have this closed system and have a much more open system that is more accurately reflective of the challenges that we have as a community today, and one where ultimately we can continue the climate leadership that we've seen from the City of San Diego, the City of La Mesa, groups like Climate Action Campaign and the Environmental Health Coalition with the support of SCIU. We will get this done. Uh, hopefully it will become law uh, by January 1st of 2020. Uh, God, that's not that far away, right? Very good. Um, uh, uh, that's, that concludes our presentation. I'm happy to try and answer any questions, or we can do one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you all prefer. We'll do our one-on-ones? Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. I appreciate it.